Hi there, Andrew Vox. It's uh, Saudi Fan 16 again, uh, here for another edition of Dunce Cap. But um, as you can see, my friend TJ is absent. Uh, he was a little under the weather this weekend, so I'm going to uh, uh, do it for this week. And then you can also see I got a, a different setting. I'm back in my place and everything. And if you can't tell, uh, yes, I am sitting on a Dragon Ball Z blanket. Yes. And I love it. It's very warm. <laughs> but anyway, uh, in this week's edition, I'm going to uh, cover uh, Funimation's uh, release of Afro Samurai and everything. So uh, I'll get uh, started right on that and everything. Um, it's uh, I just have the regular DVD release. I know that Funimation uh, has now put out uh, what's called the Complete Murder Collection, or com no, Complete Murder Sessions, I'm pretty sure is what it's called, uh, on DVD and Blu-ray, where you get both the five-episode series and uh, the movie, Ever Samurai Resurrection, uh, on a couple of discs, as long as with, uh, you know, I like, uh, an extra disc for uh, special features and whatnot. But what I have are uh, both of the director's cut editions, and everything, and you know, they're, they're pretty nice because and they're they're both two disc, and everything. Because uh, I felt like splurging the like the you know extra couple of dollars to uh, have those like special features for like the interviews and everything like that. So that's why I have these. But uh, first, I want to talk about well, I guess I can't really talk about the subverse dub uh, topic uh, and everything. But, uh, what I want, so I'll, I guess I'll just talk about the dub. Um, I really liked it. I mean, you got, uh, you know, Samuel L. Jackson as, uh, Afro, Afro Samurai. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson also does the voice for, uh, his father, for Afro's father. And he also does the... Uh, voice for the white-haired ninja ninja and everything so that I mean, uh, so he does quite a bit of it but in the series though you also have the voice of Kelly Hu and Ron Perlman as Justice he's the bad guy of it those are the primary voices uh, or at least the the big name voice actors that they have in the original series now in the movie you still Samuel L. Jackson comes back but um, then the female lead uh, Lucy Liu pops in as the uh, lead uh, voice actress, and then uh, uh, Ron Perlman is that hint at at the very end, at the end of the credits, but that's you know kind of hinting at something that we still have not yet seen, uh, even you know after for how long after it has been out. But uh, the uh, other voice that they point to in uh, Afro Samurai Resurrection is a uh, can't quite remember his name. Um, Mark Hamill, and Mark Hamill, if uh, uh, for some of you who don't know, and I certainly didn't recognize his voice anyways, he uh, is the actor who played Luke Skywalker in the original Star Wars. So he lends his voice to the movie. Anyways, I forget as which character, but that's certainly something uh, interesting to check out. Anyway, but um, anyways. Uh, it was first, you know, made in the U.S. with, uh, and according to Funimation, Gonzo uh, and uh, Spike TV, uh, and originally aired on TV, and then uh, got aired in, in, the, in Japan, and then uh, put on the DVD and uh, Blu-ray. But uh, I really like the dub. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like Samuel Jackson's voice for a lot of things, especially his acting and everything, but... I thought that the dub work was real, was pretty pretty good and everything, and I immediately uh, fell in love with every part of this series uh, that you can think of. I'm, there's basically not not a thing that I don't like about this. So I, I guess that you know pertains to kind of how simple my taste can be at points, but hey, you know, to each their own. Still. Um, 
I guess uh, the next point would uh, still be the animation. Uh, obviously, I don't have a Blu-ray upscale, so I can't really tell you how, how that works out. But I still love like my Blu-ray or my, not my Blu-ray, my my uh, regular DVD editions because I mean they still look good. I mean the series is hand drawn. Like, every bit was hand-drawn. I think uh, it was like three years in the making when uh, Gonzo first uh, appeared to the author, uh, who is uh, Takeshi uh, Oka Okazaki. Uh, it's based on his his uh, doujinshi manga and everything, but I'll, I'll talk more about that later. But um, uh, Gonzo approached the author and said, hey, we want to make this into an anime. And they decided on, you know, a five episode anime. But, uh, I, th I think the, the drawing and animation is just superb. I mean, some of the, some of the best I've seen. I mean, with it being all hand drawn and just the detail that goes into it, every bit looks awesome. I mean, the, I, I mean, just the action is something else. It's just non stop action in just, uh, the slicing. And everything of all the different body parts and like the detail that goes into it, like with the shadowing and just uh, the, some of those you know character features and the coloring. It just it's so rich to me, and I would I would love to excuse me, I would love to see this on the Blu-ray. I think it would be uh, just a titch better, maybe on the detail side. But as far as the uh, regular DVD uh, director's cut uh, versions go. I mean, the animation looks awesome, uh, and everything, and, uh, that's really all I can say. I'll, every time somebody asks me about it, I'm like, animation, awesome. So, uh, there you have that, um, and, uh, I have not heard a word on the upscale, so, uh, uh, if you have a friend who has the Blu-ray, or if you, if you hear something on the Blu-ray, well, then, uh, I would love to know about it. Um. Uh, next up, I want to switch things around because I know last time we talked characters, then we talked story. For, first, I'll talk. We're going to switch it up and put story in front of characters now. Um, so for the story, you have Afro Samurai, who at the start of the series uh, is a little boy, and his father um, has a number one headband, and there are two headbands that you're told about: the number one and the number two. Which means those two guys are the most powerful people in the world, fighters. And how, what happens is Afro's standing there, and his dad is a, you know, is a Afro, you know, big Afro black guy samurai who uh, has a number one headband. And the story takes place. It, it's like a real funky mix of like technology and. Uh, like futuristic technology and feudal Japan, so you got like samurais, but yet you got like rocket launchers and cell phones and uh, biomechanics and all sorts of shit. So, but his father is there, he's got the number one headband, and he's facing off against the, the guy uh, who has the number two headband. His name is Justice. He's a gunslinger who happens to have a third arm on his back that holds him. What do you fucking know? A sword. So he's a gunslinger with a, who's a sneaky bastard who wears a big ass cape who has a sword in his third fucking arm on his back. So, pretty fucking sneaky, but so watch out if you know, you're up against the guy. So he's certainly an interesting bad guy, but yet he doesn't have a lot of presence and everything. But the story ends up happening is where uh, that third arm ends up beheading Afro's father, and uh, uh, Afro vows revenge against Justice, and Justice welcomes uh, his revenge. He's, you know, he, he tells him to, you know, you know, fill his heart with hatred, come for revenge, you know, come for, you know, get the number one and challenge me, or get the number two headband and challenge me, and the number one when you're ready. And everything, you yeah, know, he welcomes it and everything. So that's what uh, really the entire story follows is Afro. It, it's then does a time skip where Afro is older, and he's just 
or it, and then it does flashbacks uh, throughout the series, but in the story still follows where Afro is uh, searching for the number two, and he gets the number two headband, and uh, he goes through a lot of trials through getting it and dealing with it, and Ninja Ninja comes along, uh, basically acting as his conscience and psyche, because uh, uh, Afro doesn't actually talk much, so uh, as far as dialogue and everything for the main character, you won't find a whole lot, except for a few words here and there, so Ninja Ninja fills the void, it's pretty funny, and everything. But uh, remember, there is there is a lot of coarse language, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, sexual content and nudity uh, in both the series and the movie, and a lot of very graphic violence. I mean, graphic violence, uh, a lot of beheading, dismembering, blood shooting everywhere. I mean, th this this series reminds me of <laughs> like a Tarantino Rodriguez movie, just. Pfft, Blood everywhere, just. But I mean, I, I love that. So that's me. So uh, it's it's very over the top, uh, as you would say. But uh, that's that's the uh, the general gist of the story and everything. I won't I won't give everything away and all that. So uh, I'll then I'll move on to the characters. Um, as far as the characters go, very few characters. Uh, you of course have Afro Samurai. He's very simple. He lives a uh, you know. Like a quiet life, just traveling around. But the crap thing is, everyone wants the number two headband. Everyone knows about it, so everyone wants it. So every when you own the number two headband, you're the number two. You live a life of violence and death. Especially if you hold on to it, because everyone is after you after that number two. Somebody kills you, they claim the number two headband. They're the number two. I, I assume uh, how it goes in the world. And so then they're considered the second most powerful one. And it seems like the headband gives you like an extra little ability, sort of. It's not totally noticeable, I guess. But like it seems like you know, your, uh, your abilities are heightened a little bit. Not so much as it seems like with the number one headband where you're just a badass motherfucker. But number two seems to have that little boost for you. But uh, uh, Afro is... Uh, he's not very deep. I mean, uh, revenge. That's all he wants uh, and everything. Uh, every episode, he's like fighting for his life. He gets, you know, cut up. He's faced with all sorts of strange motherfuckers. And he'll even get, like, surrounded by a horde of men and everything. Um, so, uh, while he's not very complicated, uh, he's certainly kind of that interesting kind of little bit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I kind of like that, that simple straightforwardness, but don't expect him to say too much. He does not say much. Ninja Ninja basically does the talking because he's, he plays like kind of his, uh, subconscious, you know, his, his ego and all that stuff. But in, in, uh, the series though, uh, you have this little, uh, you have this woman, Okiku, who, uh, takes care of Afro after a big entry and everything, who's, that's who Kelly Who voices. Uh, she, you know, just kind of takes care of and whatnot, and is working for an organization called, uh, it's like the Brotherhood, and everything. It's uh, where like seven brothers, brothers, are. Uh, uh, they're kind of like monks, sort of. You know, it's really weird, but uh, they're an organization who zapped in the number one headband, so they're trying to kill Afro, the number two headband, to. Uh, and they use all sorts of methods to try and kill them so they can get the number two to uh, glorify the number one because they're like worshiping, worshiping him and I don't know, they want to like either challenge him or meet him and all that shit. So like the, the Brotherhood is uh, the main challenge of, of the series and then uh, uh, Okiku uh, ends up kind of fall, falling in love with Afro and all that shit. But um, And then in the movie um, uh, it follows kind of up uh, a little after uh, the uh, uh, the original five episode series where uh, Afro got well no I guess uh, uh, oh no yeah I guess I can kind of say um, where Afro got the number one headband and uh, but so his life is complete his revenge is done 
and everything. So he's just kind of sitting there. And then what happens is uh, someone, uh, some people from his past, come beat the livid shit out of him and and uh, take the number one headband and tell him, hey, you have to go search for the number two again to face me, the number one. And everything. And so then he rejoins the deadly path upon searching for the number two headband and searching for the number one. And of course in the, uh, you know, in that second movie you have Ron Perlman and Mark Hamill. So it's, it's definitely uh, uh, a greater take on the whole revenge path, but it's not so much revenge exactly in the movie. It's more so just kind of giving him peace of mind. Of course, Ninja Ninja's like, hey, motherfucker, all you do is, you know, fight. That's all you know. You can't do shit otherwise. You know, what's this peaceful life that you've been sitting around carving wood statues for and shit? No, you need to be out there killing motherfuckers and everything. So, it kind of goes on like that. And so, I mean, Ninja Ninja's kind of right. Afro's got to live the life that he knows and everything. Um... So, uh, that's kind of how the character goes, uh, because I can't, I don't really want to give too much into the characters of the movie. It's, uh, some people from his past, a little girl and a group of people, uh, from when he was a kid at his, uh, dojo when he was a child and everything. So, uh, but, um, I guess I want to talk the anime versus the manga now is that last point. Um. Uh, the manga originally came out in like 99-2000 in a dojinshi magazine in Japan. Uh, the, the creator, uh, Takashi uh, Okazaki, uh, he loved like hip-hop and, uh, and, and soul music and kind of like the whole American media and everything. And he had a fascination with like, he loved like samurai and ninjas and everything. So we wanted to combine the two and that's where he came out with Afro Samurai. And uh, so... Uh, the Dojinshi came out, then Gonzo approached him, and uh, so they made the anime, and then what they came out with was a two-volume version of the manga for the U.S., uh, for Afro Samurai. Um, I haven't read any of it. I, I've seen it in stores, uh, so I don't really have a thought on it. I, I would assume it'd actually be kind of neat and everything. I mean, it'd be kind of like a, like a very, it'd be like a graphic, graphic novel, you know, it, it kind of be what, what it would be, and so, uh, I guess, you know, kind of like what, uh, Frank Miller, and, uh, I, I think Rodriguez might do a little bit, but, you know, they do graphic novels that are very gritty and everything, so I, maybe you could sort of compare the manga to those graphic novels, I'm, uh, speculating, um, uh, you know, I could be totally wrong, but it seems like how the violence and, but yet, like, the comic book manga uh, story or uh, illustration goes along, and that could be related. Uh, but that's that's just kind of my guess on it. But then, like, uh, you know, the manga, I, or not, not the manga, the anime, I own, I own, you know, obviously both director cuts of uh, each part of the anime. Um, and I love it and everything. And the cool thing is, is, uh, Samuel L. Jackson kind of hopped in on the production side and helped out. And he even went over to, like, as part of the special features, he jumped over to Japan and, like, went through some, like, official blessing ceremonies and talked to the, uh, you know, the author and creator of Afro and just uh, did all sorts of stuff uh, with it and everything. And uh, Samuel L. was really uh, pretty cool with it. And um, uh, also, one of the big things is the music, like, the soundtrack. Uh, the Riza, or sometimes the R the RZA, uh, former member of the Wu Tang Clan, if uh, some of you remember them, he did all the music for the series and the movie, and it is nuts. I mean, it's just it's just so cool how it flows and everything, and like it just totally works with the fight scenes and all that, and so it's it's just really cool having that rap hip hop music just working in with the, that weird kind of vibe, but yet that, you know, the, you know, just the kick with the lyrics and everything, working in, you know, where you're appreciating it at the same time while you're just watching these, you know, just brutal fights, you know, that Afro has, so it's, it's, 
it's really awesome. I really love the the the, uh, the soundtrack for uh, both of these and everything. But um, another thing I have to add for the anime is um, Afro Samurai uh, was the first Japanese anime to win an Emmy. It was nominated for two Emmys because uh, Afro originally aired in 2007. The, the, the series, and then in 2009, the uh, film uh, aired on TV, both on Spike. But um, uh, the series, I do believe, uh, wait, no, no, the movie, no, the movie uh, okay, got two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Animation, uh, which is, that's the Emmy that it won, and then it was also nominated for Outstanding Animated Program because it's over an hour long, but uh, it lost that one. But still, uh, it was the first Japanese anime, uh, even though it was, I think, it, it was kind of done, you know, in the U.S. and in, in, in Japan, but it's the first Japanese anime to win an Emmy, so that's pretty awesome, if that has anything to say about it, even though it's uh, very simplistic with everything else. So, I don't know. And it's a very easy watch. The series is 125 minutes. And uh, the movie is like 97, so about 100 minutes. So, I mean, not even four hours out of your time, and you watch the whole thing and everything. But um, uh, on the overview, I guess, you know, uh, I think they're, they might have put out a sub version of it in Japan and everything. I have no idea what it's like, but uh, I mean, obviously it aired first in the U.S. I, lo I love the dub and everything, because that's just kind of what it was made for. Um, uh, the animation fucking awesome. I mean, you can't be purely hand-drawn. I mean, you can't, even the CG, I mean, despite how good the CG is and everything, and making stuff on the computer, this hand-drawn, just, you can't beat it still. You cannot beat it. And everything. And then, uh, you know, story, very simple. You know, revenge, blah, blah, blah. You know, kind of simple from there. It kind of follows your typical storyline. But it's, it's fun, it's easy, it's not very complicated, so it's a nice thing to sit back and just be able to watch and uh, enjoy some gruesome violence and a bit of language. Sex. Yeah. <laughs> but it's no hentai. So yeah. It's only rated TVMA. Um, the character is also, you know, very simple. Not a whole lot to it. But uh, it's, you know, it's it's still fun and everything. So that, that's about all I got on that. Um, but uh, I also want to show you real quick I have the uh, PS3 version of the Afro Samurai video game and everything. Uh, I, I bought it for pretty cheap and all that. Uh, it's a single player, uh, no online, uh, no trophies, nothing like that. But uh, it's, a, it's a pretty neat case and everything. Like this is, like see, it's an actual case and everything. And it's got like a little kind of magnetic bit here to tell you about the voices and the music and uh, a little bit about it, but, um, it's, you know, uh, they worked really hard on the video game as well, uh, like, you can still see, like, the animation lines on the characters and everything, because they really wanted to define that difference, uh, in the video game, and, uh, there's a lot of, uh, filler in the video game and everything, but it's a, I know it's a complete button masher, and some of the combos are kind of hard to actually figure out unless you really pay attention to it. I just kind of still do the button mash and just kind of make sure that, you know, I got through the game. But I mean, the general story, uh, plot line is, you know, of course the same based on the series. But, uh, I mean, it was, uh, you know, it's pretty fun and everything. Uh, you know, uh, if you're pretty quick at video games, it will kill a couple hours. I've played it through two or three times. But again, you know, no trophies, but uh, still fun to play and all that. So, um, other than that, uh, I don't really got a whole lot except uh, actually the author uh, in one of the special features has stated that uh, he has enough material written to make a series, back a series about like each like main character. So that would be really cool to see. Um, uh, he hasn't released any of it. I kind of wish that he would. You know, I would love to have some more Afro Samurai material, but uh, you know, it hasn't come around as of yet. And so, uh, other than that, you know, uh, that you know 
has been, you know, me, Saudi Fan 16. That's been my review of the Funimation release of Afro Samurai, and I talked a little bit about the PS3 version of the video game. So, uh, until next time, uh, hope you guys have a good week, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.